Hello dear learner friends. Welcome to today's presentation. I am your English teacher Dr. Pallavi Gugoi of Krishna Kanda Handic State Open University, Guwahati. The presentation is titled Francis Bacon of Garden. And this is for BA English learners of semester 4 and the paper is prose. I would like to begin with a quote by George Bernard Shaw. Quote unquote, the best place to find God is in a garden. Another one by Joseph Addison, who was a famous essayist. Quote unquote, I value my garden more for being full of blackbirds than of cherries, and very frankly, give them fruit for their songs. Another one by Cicero. Quote unquote, if you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. The content of your presentation is structured as follows. Introduction, learning about the life and works of Francis Bacon, appreciating the essay of Garden, some interesting aspects of the essay, self-check questions, conclusion followed by references. To introduce you to Francis Bacon, Bacon was an English essayist, philosopher, scientist, statesman and jurist. He is considered as one of the significant prose writers of the 17th century and a pioneer of essay or essay writing owing to his significant literary contributions as an essayist. His volumes of essays encompasses important aspects of life and living, philosophy and practicality, information and knowledge. We shall gain a glimpse of his mastery at handling prose in one of his interesting essays titled Of Garden. Learning about the life and works of Francis Bacon 1. Bacon's Life at a Glimpse Bacon was truly a renaissance figure in terms of his contributions to various fields such as literature, philosophy, science, law, politics and diplomatic services. Bacon was born to a noble aristocratic family of England. His mother, Lady Anne Bacon, was an avid reader and very well versed in various literature and languages. She had an extensive influence on Bacon's early childhood years. In his early years, he was mostly tutored in the comforts of his home and picked up the Latin language. He attended Trinity College, Cambridge, studied law at the University of Poitiers and then joined Gray's Inn in 1576. Bacon had a sharp intellect and was greatly influenced by some of the ancient philosophers namely Aristotle, Plato, Socrates and Cicero, whom we had just quoted, which found a reflection in most of his reflective writings to a great extent. Young Bacon was also an avid traveller and visited various places like Italy and Spain which had enriched his learning experiences. He had worked for the diplomatic services as a barrister and had a prosperous political career as well. Bacon did not, mu in, uh, sorry, Bacon did not inherit much in terms of his paternal property or wealth following his father's demise and his marriage with Alice Burnham in 1606 did not last long. However, he had an engaging career and lived a quiet life. Due to severe pneumonia, Bacon had passed away quietly on 9th April 1626 at Highgate, London. 2. Bacon's Works at a Glance Or as I have titled it, Bacon's Works at a Glimpse. Bacon's best known work is titled Novum Organum published in Latin in 1620, which had opened up a newer perspectives towards the scientific way of acquiring knowledge. In fact, great thinkers of the Renaissance period such as Voltaire and Diderot considered Bacon as the father of modern science. Bacon's most important work of literary merit is titled Essays, first published in 1597 comprising a total of 10 essays, second publication in 1612 with 38 essays, final compilation in 1625 with 58 essays. Bacon is known to have practiced taking notes from book sources, recording interesting observations, proverbs, reflections, quotations, Latin phrases, etc. His note-taking method also gave shape to his essays that inquired on multiple aspects of human life. Bacon also drew much inspiration from the famous French essayist Michel de Montaigne. He believed in the spirit of new Renaissance humanism and through the spirit of inquiry, he was a skeptic in his intellectual approach. Bacon's empirical or inductive method of 
knowledge that emphasized on the relevance of experience, proof, and physical observation led to the development of the scientific method which is also known today as the Baconian method. Through his essays, Bacon succeeds at providing a deep insight into his philosophical and moral reflections presented with lively examples and a concise manner. His essays cover interesting aspects of human life and human nature which we can easily relate to and from which we may be inspired to broaden our own perspectives of life and living. Appreciating the essay titled Of Garden <clears throat> Now, can you imagine a world without trees and plants, without greenery? The world would be a dull and desolate place without nature's bounty, without which we would not survive long. The essay, titled Of Garden, begins on the thought that a garden is a retreat, a refuge for the human soul, and also one of the purest of human pleasures, quote-unquote, the purest of human pleasures, in the words of Bacon. Bacon mentions that Almighty God was the first to have begun a garden. He opines that there should be beautiful gardens with plants and seasoned blooms all round the year and then goes on to describe a long list of various fruits and ornamental plants that are ideal for the changing seasons in the calendar. For the list of plants and trees he mentions in the essay, he also specifies that they are ideal for the climate of London. Natural air is best perfumed with sweet fragrance or quote-unquote breath of flowers, which he considers delightful as soft music that creates a pleasant environment. Flowery blooms are always better in the gardens than being plucked by our hands. However, when necessary, plants must also be pruned. Bacon, who prefers a neat and tidy garden, describes the addition of water fountains, which adds to the aesthetic beauty of gardens. There are two types of fountains. He mentions that fountains are carved in marble that spouts or sprinkle waters, and there's this other kind that are often embellished or decorated like a basin, free of any fish, slime, or mud. Sprinkling fountains must be cleaned regularly to avoid growth of moss or decaying matter and must have flowing water. Have you ever seen a fountain? Seen birds taking a cool drink or played with its gushing water? It's simply marvelous. Bacon mentions that he prefers a square-shaped garden with a green entrance, alleys that are shaded with a central mount about 30 foot high with at least three parts that provides a perfect view of the entire garden and a banquet house for light meals. He does not prefer aviaries that houses birds unless they are large, clean, airy and with living plants for birds to nestle and have a little space for themselves. Bacon feels that several of the sweet flowers that go unnoticed and trampled by one's feet like burnet, wild thyme and water mints must find a deserving place in alleys so that one can truly experience the pleasure of this sweet fragrance. Bacon expresses his own personal preferences with regard to a garden of his own that may not be as magnificent, uh, sorry, as magnificent as a quote-unquote princely garden, but be a little inspired where it concerns garden planning. Now here are some flowers for you. Some interesting aspects of the essay. Bacon wishes to get across the message that regardless of the geographical place, to which we belong, all our gardens can bloom in quote unquote verper petuum, at least that's how it's spelled, uh, in the words of Virgil, or in other words, eternal spring throughout the year, if we follow the yearly roster of gardening and nurturing plants. The essay of garden provides any reader a literal gardener's almanac that records the best time and climatic conditions, plant flowering and ornamental plants, herbs and shrubs, shade giving and fruit bearing trees. In a nutshell, the message contained in the essay is the importance of cultivating a love for plants that not only makes a delightful hobby, but also creates pleasant natural surroundings, which in turn become our spaces of joyous retreat. The essay also highlights garden planning or landscaping, which enhances one's creativity by encouraging experimentation with seasonal and evergreen plants, which we may ad adopt based on our general climate and geographical location. The essay encourages readers to be budding gardeners too, as it describes how one can mix and match flowering plants while also taking into account the importance of sunlight, air, rain and water while planting a garden. Thus, one of the major themes emerging in the essay is gardening as an enriching experience. After reading the essay, we shall be acquainted with Bacon's crisp and conversational style of writing, which certainly makes his reflective essays reader-friendly. His essays are replete with aphorisms, which is general truth or principles, moral truisms, and practical suggestions on various aspects 
of human nature and philosophy, human virtues and vices, state and society, reality and best practices. According to Bacon, the English and French were well known to have cultivated the art of geometrical garden landscaping. Some of the most beautiful French Renaissance gardens at that time were, and these are really difficult to spell, Chateau de Broye, Chateau de Fontainebleau, Chateau de Villandry, Tuileries Garden, or Luxembourg Gardens, among others. Closer home in India, the Zakir Hussain Rose Garden in Chandigarh is one of the largest rose gardens in Asia that not only houses a variety of roses, almost 1,600 species, but also medicinal gardens. Another one is the Tulip Garden in Srinagar that has various varieties of tulips. Of course, Bacon does not mention these. These are just for your additional information. The beautiful Mughal Gardens in Delhi, Shalimar Bagh in Kashmir, Brindavan Gardens in Mysore, Hanging Gardens in Mumbai, among several others are some of the most spectacular gardens to visit in India. You'll be interested to know that we also have protective spaces where orchids are cultivated like the Sessa Orchid Sanctuary and Orchid Research Centers at Tipi in Arunachal Pradesh or the Deerali Orchid Sanctuary in Sikkim. These are some exotic plants and it's worth trying to save them. Now coming to the self-check questions. Question 1. Who was Francis Bacon? Question 2. What were some of the significant literary contributions of Francis Bacon? Question 3. What is the essay title of Garden by Francis Bacon all about? Question 4. What are some of the significant aspects of the essay of Garden? Question 5. Which French gardens were considered some of the world's best Renaissance gardens of the world? Question number 6. What are some of the additional observations with regard to the text of the essay? Of garden. With this, we come to the end of the presentation. Here are the references. You can refer to the self learning material of BA English, semester 4, which is also available as uh, ESLM. And I hope you have enjoyed the photographs that I have put in for your delight. Thank you for your patient listening, and I hope that you do very well and wish you all the best. Thank you, dear learner friends.